In this video, I'm going to show you and review the ultimate iPad photo booth. Now, this video is a must watch if you're looking for a way to expand or even start your own photo booth business, whether you're a photographer, a DJ, event planner, or even a hobbyist. Hey guys, my name is Zai. Now, I do own a photo booth business for about three years and been in the wedding photography industry for almost 10 years. I started with a traditional photo booth and eventually got a salsa booth here right beside me. As I'm from wedding photography, I do events as well, uh, which includes parties, birthdays, socials. Initially, I was contemplating to get it, but uh, yeah, I ended up get, purchasing it because I want to scale up my business and include it in my package. It's got everything I'm looking for, both uh, features and benefits. So if you need to learn more in specs, um, the details, you can also check the uh, links down below. Now, there's a disclaimer. So this isn't a sponsored video uh, by the photo booth company, but just my honest review and my thoughts of uh, what I think is the best social media photo booth out there uh, for all types of events. Okay, and again, uh, please keep in mind that this review is from an event photographer's perspective. Okay. Now to start off, I'm gonna talk about the size and the, uh, you know, the, the box itself. Now I brought my roller bag with me because I'm a wedding photographer. Um, just to kind of give a comparison, you know, side by side how big it is. It is a little bit bigger, of course, and it's a little bit wider and, and also heavier. I don't have the photo booth inside right now, um, but I just want to kind of show you, you know, like what you get because this is actually part of the part of the, the package, right? So. It is durable, just like those Pelican cases. There are sorry, retractable handles. There are four uh, latches in here, two on each side, two at the front. There you go. And then there's locks for additional security, so you can put padlocks in here. Um, yeah. And then inside, you'll see the main compartment is actually the, the cutout for the photo booth itself with the, with the two extra cutouts for the accessories like the cable. Of course, we've got the paddings here on top. All right. Now this is, uh, uh, this part here is handy because this little square tag is actually a QR code. So, uh, and it's for like to view assembly video. So if you've got an assistant or let's just say, you know, just someone that you ask to help you out, you know how to assemble it. Uh, using their phone to snap a photo of this QR code and that's going to bring uh, bring uh, or uh, bring up the tutorial videos on how to assemble it but you know it's pretty much straightforward I mean I can assemble it for for approximately like a couple minutes uh, to get it up and running and then uh, I can worry about the the other stuff later on like the backdrop uh, the additional lights and all that stuff now I am from Manitoba, so of course I have to pay for the shipping international, which is an extra $150 on top of the price of the, uh, the unit itself. And then that doesn't come with a subscription. You have to pay for that, for the uh, software of the photo booth and also for the, the, the iPad itself, okay? Because that would be your main, uh, like your machine, okay? So to, um, to install your software and to, to run the, the, the booth itself. But other than that, you know, I'm pleased with the, with the setup. I, I like it because I, you know, whenever I go for events and I'm by myself, okay, and I mean, I can carry this with me. 
uh, without needing for assistance. You know, I just set it and forget. Well, of course, I'll have to keep an eye on it once in a while, but uh, you know, it, it just runs for me. All right, guys, so here's the fun part. Let's see what's inside. All right, so there we go. Um, so we'll be surprised that everything actually is packed into this, um, you know, suitcase here. Okay, you just have to always be careful. Now, they do come with these uh, uh, felt, you know, like cloth, All right? So you can just put it over there for now. Now, you'll notice that here, okay, so this is where you put the iPad, okay? Um, I'll post or flash the information on the screen so that way you know which iPads are supported, okay, and other technical information. Um, uh, of course, you don't want to disassemble it. All you got to do is plug this little cable in. It is supplied, okay, by the uh, photo booth company, right? This goes in, it's a USB-C, plugs into your iPad. And the moment you plug it in, plug in your iPad um, to, or sorry, the uh, this one to the outlet, uh, you see this fan here? So basically, if it's, uh, or if you're running outdoor events, so this actually just runs constantly. So it's just to make sure your iPad is not uh, overheating, okay? Down at the bottom, this is where you find the, the screws, right? So the, this part here is, it's a proprietary cable. Now I would suggest you do pick up some backup just in case, you know, uh, you'll never know, right? So they do sell like a backup uh, cable. I wish it, it is not proprietary, but again, um, you know, for, for something like this, I mean, I, I really can't complain. I know I, I, they, they put a lot of thought in, you know, the design and the, uh, you know, the, the features of this. So yeah, that's how it looks. looks this cool. one right here is actually your base, uh, base plate. Okay. And then those two tubes over there, they go in here. So one. Too. All right, and that's it. Okay, I mean I've uh, I've already have the I already have the extensions outside, but this is these slots here are for other stuff that you need to you know put in. So you do get two of these. You'll be able to put the plate like this one. I forgot to uh, show it on the camera. Um, so this one goes at the front of the of the. Uh, the, the booth itself okay and then there's four screws in here all right and that basically locks the iPad into place and then there's that little thing I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera so you'll notice that there is a little hole in here right you can actually poke that in so you can turn on turn off your iPad I'll show that to you in just a moment okay um, it doesn't matter which one you use either either of them uh, would be fine. Now there will be instructions here on how you actually do it the right way. Um, these are just like long, like big long screws, right? Okay, and they go on top of each other. Now at the back, this is actually the uh, locking lever, right? So you push and then you turn. This allows you to adjust the height of the salsa booth. Now it comes with cords, of course. And the cords were very long. I never needed an extension cord, but I still carry it with me uh, just in case. And this is the one I was referring to as uh, proprietary. So this plugs in at the back of the salsa. Now in terms of assembly, it's fairly simple. They do claim that you can assemble this for like 60 seconds. Um, even though it is somehow true, I mean, you can assemble it like just the hardware for about 60 seconds, okay? Uh, but you usually set this up for about like three, you know, like five minutes just to make sure everything is secure. Uh, well, I just want to quickly show you um, how, how you would normally like assemble it. I know there is a video tutorial already, but uh, yeah, I mean, my suggestion is you put the the cord already at the bottom okay now I do have a cover okay I'm gonna post links down below uh, for my suggestion on what to use 
because you don't want this to be just hanging around, right? Or just put some tape on it. Well, you could make sure you put a really uh, high grade tape or durable tape. Because um, you'll notice this is not like your typical extension cord. They, they are actually thinner, right? So make sure you do have protection on it. Plus it adds like a better, you know, like look overall, uh, instead of just like patching like a white or like a duct tape, you know, on, on let's just say uh, an elegant wedding event. Okay. And you always want to be careful when you uh, try to screw things down so it does not like wear out. So with this cable, you plug it in and then you just twist it. And okay, there we go. It locks it to place. Okay. All right, now once everything's assembled, and let's just say you need to move the, uh, the photo booth itself. You can actually lift it up and just move it to another place. It's, it's fairly, fairly light. The one thing to watch out for is it does wobble. All right, and now I'm going to install the iPad and also the plate. All right, to set it up for the first time, so of course you, need, you would need your iPad and also the plate to cover it. It just basically lines up at the back. Uh, once you put it in, you don't have to take out your iPad anyways, so and remember that's the, the uh, little hole the um, Access to the power the one that I mentioned earlier Okay, so you basically just like tap that with that little pin Okay, so to turn on and turn off your iPad. I Like the LED here because there's like a very very smooth transition when it changes color so it's not like one of those LED that you have those little um, like white or sorry those bulbs that you see um, so it's very very smooth you know it doesn't really look um, uh, like cheap right so they, they put a lot of thought with the design and made you know make make this put or made this put really like very attractive you know for like events and like I mentioned you're always gonna keep your iPad uh, like on all the time I mean to say you don't want to have like a standby mode uh, make sure that the notifications do not disturb is on okay so that way when it starts um, or when you know when, when the iPad is on or they start using the photo booth it doesn't distract you know no notifications they're gonna see uh, right now I'm basically on the home page I've only got the salsa booth here aside from the other Apple stuff that you know came with it I don't really use it as a personal. This is just a dedicated iPad for my uh, salsa booth. And it's a 256 gigabyte. And uh, you know, I would suggest you don't get the 256, just go with a 128 because you're not gonna be using it that much. All the, and that's the good thing about the salsa app is all the information are actually stored in the live gallery, which is in the cloud, right? And eventually you can just go to your browser and download them onto your computer, so which is really, really nice. Now, if you go offline, of course, you won't be able to send uh, those email or texts, but it's gonna give you a disclaimer to your guests saying that it'll take 24 hours for them to receive the photos, okay? Uh, but the airdrop still works because it only works via Bluetooth anyways. Um, it doesn't require a connection to the internet as long as you have the Bluetooth and the Wi-Fi like ticked on, okay? Okay, I'm just gonna discard that. And there we go. Now, there is actually a way to lock the screen so that way people won't be able to exit out of the program. Okay, but right now, again, uh, I've got just the Salsa uh, app installed. This is how it looks like. I already, you know, I'm already using it, of course, so uh, it's not gonna go through the process. So, uh, okay, so to access the admin uh, tool or the tools, you basically tap here twice. Now it's going to give you the dashboard and quick gallery. Uh, the dashboard is where you manage, you know, the the, the events. Quick gal uh, gallery is basically the, the, the live gallery, you know, where the photos are taken. This is accessible by the clients, okay? However, the dashboard is only accessible by the operator. Um, now you're going to see this error message if the network speed is below the, the, the uh, uh, suggested connection, okay? Right now, I'm just gonna click on offline because, you know, um, we're, we're just doing a demo here anyways. 
And yeah, it says right there on top, due to lack of network connectivity, some features are uh, unavailable, okay? The settings are right here. So this is where you actually put in the information, set up your passcode. The, the lamp mode, it's basically if you, you know, working in the dark situations and needing to set, uh, set this up for the first time, like on the event. I don't usually use it because I have like LED lights with me. So uh, you can just uh, use this for, let's just say emergency if you, if you need extra light. Okay, and then the rest of the stuff, and then you can sign out your account. I'm just gonna show you quickly or give you a quick rundown what these ones are. So event info, that's basically just so the description. Uh, modes, you can turn on and turn off certain uh, features, okay? So let's just say if you wanna do just the photo only or boomerang only, then you can do that here. I usually leave this on all the time, uh, all these, uh, uh, feature uh, capture modes okay now you can use this in an upsell too let's just say if you don't want uh, them to or let's just say you want to upsell for like a boomerang then you can have them add an extra you know uh, cost okay to have all the features uh, be usable okay filters honestly I've never used it because when they transfer it to their phone like the guest uh, especially like the younger generations they're gonna be posting on Instagram or YouTube and then they'll be adding like filters on it. So don't worry about it too much. Uh, overlays, you can actually put different overlays and people, there's like a prompt on the screen where they can select overlays. I, I never ask or I never had like a, an overlay selection. I only have like one. What I usually do is um, I'll, I'll make a like a, I'll give him a quote, like three templates. I'll give them uh, like the options to pick one and whatever they pick. So that's what we put here and that stays for the entire event, okay? And then you can just turn it on, turn it off here. This is where you manage them. Camera settings. Okay, so you'll notice the lamp actually automatically uh, turns on. So that way you can see yourself, right? And you can adjust accordingly, okay? Uh, by default, I mean, I, I don't really change a lot of these. Uh, the only thing I change is actually, let's just scroll up. Okay, I'll just lower down the, uh, the flash. But again, I usually leave this maxed out, okay? And if you're worried that you, you know, um, you're not sure what you did, you just click uh, restore defaults. Um, exposure is one. And here's one of the, the important settings, okay? If you're in a situation where there, there's uh, like, the light is changing, then you might wanna do an auto exposure. But again, you still wanna play around with it, right? Or at least keep an eye on it. Uh, this is where you select the exposure time, you like the shutter speed, and then the ISO, of course. You know, if you're in, in, into uh, photography, the higher ISO, the more grains your picture is going to turn out, okay, because, you know, it has to compensate for low light. Um, so I usually keep it at about, yeah, 800, 400. That's like the sweet spot. Again, I bring two lights with me, so I don't have to worry about cranking it up, okay? Again, auto exposure, use it if, let's just say, you're in an event, you know, from, let's like, just say, afternoon, changing it to, like, the midnight where, you know, the sun's setting. Um, or if, you know, the... If, if, if there's no, uh, if the light is not constant, basically, okay? Uh, white balance is another one. This is where I actually make tweak um, of like the skin tones and, and all that stuff. So same thing here, same idea. You'll notice there's an auto white balance. Um, the tint basically controls like pink and then the green temperature. That's like cool, which is the blue. And also uh, here, so it's blue. And then yellowish. All right, so you just basically play around with it. And you wanna have a consistent look all through your, uh, all throughout the photos, okay? So that's why I, I would only use auto if, again, only if the lights are changing. Uh, share, sorry, this is where you can design your um, sharing options okay so you can do email text airdrop 
and QR codes. Guest interface, all right, so you can adjust the countdown duration, change your background to something else. Oh, here, configure. Now, LED, I mean, I, I don't really play around with this uh, much because these lights, you see they're changing, right? But that's only if it's a standby mode, okay? So this is good to attract attention or to change theme. Uh, but one thing you wanna check here is the hands-free mode, okay? So, so I just turn it on and it says the, for true hands-on or true hands-free experience, uh, limit the modes, filters, and overlay to one option. Why? So that, that way when they like use their hands to, uh, to trigger you know, the, the photo, it will just automatically like start the countdown without prompting them to pick, let's just say photo, or do you want photo, boomerang, GIF, GIF, and stuff like that, okay? Because it's pointless. I mean, if you have hands-free mode and then it's gonna prompt you, what do you wanna pick? And then you're gonna end up coming here and then pick up anyways. Now the hands-free mode is a, is a new feature, as you all know, because of the COVID situation. It uses the, it senses your camera, oh, sorry, your, your hands using the camera. So that's why, I mean, so if you've got um, like small hands or big hands, so the, you know, the, the camera might sense it, you know, in a different way, okay? And down here at the bottom, this is where you unpair LEDs. Uh, when, you, when you set it up for the first time, you have to pair the LEDs. So basically pairing this uh, using the Bluetooth. You always want to keep the iPad like in full brightness and also um, like do not disturb mode. Okay, so that way, you know, it does not like prompt there on top that uh, there's like a disconnection or something. Uh, so that way it doesn't basically get any interruption. Okay. Okay, so that's what you, you're going to see here. Um, okay, so live gallery is basically the same. Uh, as the one that I showed you earlier, uh, but this is this is actually to for you to configure uh, what the gallery or live gallery would uh, look like. Uh, so gallery view, this kind of gives you or op opens up the browser and shows you what would people would would see. Okay, right. So before you go to an event. Um, of course, you'll, you'll, you're going to set up the templates and everything, right? And then before it starts out, okay, gives, it gives you this little checklist. The battery, the storage, Wi-Fi, uh, mobile data if you're not connected to Wi-Fi. You can actually charge them extra, you know, if there's no Wi-Fi in place. So, but the thing is, you, you're going to have to have an iPad that has a cellular uh, capability. Um, one thing here is... I actually use my phone if there's no, like if the Wi-Fi is, is not that great, you know, in that place, but I'm gonna inform, uh, it's part of my contract, I'm gonna inform them to, oh, that there is additional cost, you know, if, if we're gonna be using like a 3G, 4G or mobile hotspot, okay? Guided access, so that's basically where it locks it, okay? So it does not, uh, or it prevents people from exiting out of the program. Uh, passcode, um, this is like a, a password, you know, before you can uh, like make changes. Right now, I don't have to worry about those. So I'm just gonna click on uh, start event. All right, so we're gonna quickly try out the hands-free mode. All right, and there's your QR code. Now there is a 30 second countdown. Okay, so uh, before it restarts, uh, you're, you know, it allows the guests to, you know, take a photo of the QR code so they can retrieve or download this, um, you know, from the gallery. So let's review some sharing options in here. So right now I've got all those four enabled. Uh, so for email, um, there's already pre-populated, you know, at yahoo.com. So that way it saves them time, in, you know, typing the, the domain, right? Now, this is also a good way to capture their email, but you probably want to have like a disclaimer first um, before you can use their email if you're sending out promotions. 
Uh, second would be tax. Now you can configure your area code under settings. So this is pretty straightforward. Airdrop, you can use it you know, for Apple devices. Keep in mind there's no record or there's no analytics, meaning to say you won't be able to capture their phone number and then their email if you're doing some uh, email marketing. Okay, and last but not least is the QR code. All right, so now once you've ordered one, what else do you need? Okay, so of course you would need an iPad. And when you buy one, it doesn't uh, come with the iPad, okay? Um, I do recommend a 12.9. This is the current generation of the iPad at the time of this recording. Now, once you've got that and you need some extra uh, lights, then I would suggest picking up one of these. Now, the, again, they don't come with batteries when you get one through, uh, let's just say, Amazon or online, um, and, unless you get the more expensive ones. But, you know, they, they, they last for about two hours, I'd say two and a half with this uh, fully charged. You can also change, of course, the colors. Uh, I usually set it to cool white, okay? And then you can always plug that in. Uh, you can also get something like this, like a spotlight. Okay, now you might be thinking, is the lights here good enough? It, it is good for about, I'd say about three to four uh, feet, okay? Uh, now, if you have, let's just say, a large group of people, for about like eight feet in distance, I would. I have actually two of this, so I would recommend you know uh, setting this up um, like on each side. Okay, so aside from lights, you probably want to get something like uh, this. You know, this is a mic stand. The reason I like this is it does have a round base. Okay, compared to a typical light stand, it has a three like it's three legged. So you know your customers or clients they don't they don't tip tip this over. Okay, now. I've got two of these, okay? You, you also might wanna pick up like the, the thread because when you buy one of these, I'll post links at the bottom, they, they don't come with the, like a tripod mount, okay? So keep that in mind. Okay, and last but not least, backdrops. Okay, so now I've used this couple of events uh, indoors, tight spaces that, you know, doesn't really need a backdrop because when you, let's just say, design a template, you know, that's gonna have like nice borders on it. Plus, it's a portrait mode, right? So you're not, they're not gonna see like the whole backdrop. But again, if, you, if you're on a, uh, like a big event, or let's just say it's part of your package and th there's like a lot of, uh, let's say group of people and you, they need to step back, then yes, you probably need a backdrop. Uh, and again, it adds, you can add it to your package. You know, it's, um, I do charge it extra, okay? Because it's a premium backdrop that I use. I'll post some examples, the ones that I've owned. Uh, but yeah, so something I would recommend uh, to pick up as well. All right, so now let's talk about the pros and cons, you know. I like this idea and that's basically what it solds me here, you know, the all-in-one idea, the business in a box. Uh, it's, it's very minimalist and clean, uh, like less setup uh, or stuff compared to the traditional photo booth equipment where I have like different bags, you know, like props, table for the props. Uh, the luggage for extra stuff. Now it's very unique uh, versus a traditional photo booth. This one's a bit different. So it's something that would really wow your clients. It's like an apple of the photo booth. Uh-huh, I think, <laughs> all right. And again, it's just more professional look, okay? Uh, second would be, it, it basically helped me uh, scale up uh, my business, okay? I've added this to my existing packages and I've got uh, you know, ROI quicker uh, for my existing booking. Now, in terms of price, it it's, could be controversial for some. Now, for a starter, um, you know, the, the company does provide material or marketing material materials uh, that you can download. Um, they're going to give you the templates. And of course, as you grow up, as you get more clients, you, you know, constant booking, uh, it will uh, pay off, okay? Your like your photo booth and plus your other um, expenses, including the uh, subscription. Now the third pro would be the software itself, the the Salsa software. Okay, it's I believe it's one of the best out there. I've compared and seen um, like other software, uh, a photo booth software. I was even tempted to install 
those in the booth, but why, right? So I actually get a, be a better value and uh, price, you know, versus competitors. Even if you look it up, I challenge you to check it online, see what you can find, and you might really end up going with the uh, Salsa. Now, th there's also great support. You know, I've got some issues in the past and they quickly responded. Other than that, you know, th there's a Facebook community where they share a lot of tips uh, and tricks and other uh, questions as well. Now, in terms of cons, not much. Again, price, you know, it'll take uh, some time also to do your marketing, your promotions, like research, you know, in your place, depending where you are. Um, yeah, so another would be like low and low light situations, okay? Since it is iPad dependent, so the image quality is based on the iPad itself, right? For its purpose, images are web version only, so they're mostly good for like phones, you know, like your computer, um, mobile devices, and even like small prints, four by six. Now, I would suggest you bring or add lights, uh, so that way, you know, it's not gonna be like grainy in lower or, or low light situation. And again, um, if you're not really into like printing, uh, big prints, like large prints, uh, that's what I'm referring to, then you don't have to worry about it. Now, the third issue would be like reflection. If, you, if your guests have like reflections, or sorry, wearing <laughs> glasses and, you know, um, or anything that would, you think this would reflect, then that's something you would watch out for, okay? Another cons I would say would be proprietary. I'd say to get a spare if you can, you know, let's just say the screws gets worn out over time. Uh, it's really hard to find those because I think it's only available with, with the, the company. Now, the iPad connections are also proprietary, just like I mentioned earlier. Now, in conclusion, you know, should you get one? Now, if you're already like booking clients, if you're already in the industry, then yes, you know, it's something that you could add on to your package. Now, you might be wondering, is it also okay if I just purchase this, um, if I'm just starting out a photo booth business? Well, absolutely, okay? You just have to, uh, you know, uh, keep in mind that you have to uh, build like the traffic, okay? Your bookings as well. Uh, you have to show them like some samples, okay, of your work. But again, everyone started somewhere, right? So you can always start with that. The good thing about the sales or the company is they do provide marketing materials as well, like even templates to, to get you started, right? So, so it's really, you know, it's really a good uh, investment, okay? But again, just keep in mind that it will just take you time before it'll break you even. Those profits, I'd say, would also help you uh, pay for the, the maintenance and also um, like additional or spare accessories and most importantly for the subscription. All right, so that wraps it up guys. I hope you find this video helpful and useful if you're considering to get one of these uh, social media booths. Now, if this is your first time in my channel, consider hitting the like button, uh, subscribe and comment down below your questions, okay? And then I'll respond to your questions as soon as I can. Uh, now check my other videos as well in my channel for other like gear or tips and other reviews, okay? I'll be posting links below at the bottom for accessories like this and also where you can actually get the uh, salsa booth, okay? So that'll be all and I'll see you guys in the next one. Be safe.